Thank you, Mr. Shelter. I have an email from Margaret for today, which to share with everyone. For instance, I'm here, I might as well do that. And I've shared a link with the Health and Shelter website. Because on that website, we have the capital training manual that Flavio uh, was talking about, and a lot of other resources that we produce over the um, 14, 15 years that we've been in existence. So I just wanted to share that link with you. And that is my email. She's a lady, she should expect that as a response a man gave to me when I said to him that he should go to okay, I can't even do it. But he's a work at the NIS office and the lady was going into the NIS. And that is what he said, you know, that she's a lady, she should expect that. And when I asked the female security guard uh, what she felt is the security guard does this. So it was interesting that. So that men as partners. I didn't do that. Right. Ah, I'm sorry, right? <laughs> I have to remember. Right, this was not the website. And on the website, we have all the project proposals that we've ever written on the project agreement. The seven shots are very committed to the transparency and the comfortability. So all of the projects you've ever done, please feel free to use the materials as you see fit. If you want to edit the reports and pretend they're here, that's fine too. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, 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 uh, so the CAPRA manual that we talked about is a very valuable resource. And um, we, we, had it, we had an electronic copy and we put it up. I never got permission from Cap to do that, but that's not. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So sit down and shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. There's a response a uh, man gave to me when I was doing a session. The first time when I joined Healthy Shot, I got involved in public education because I was talking about alcohol, domestic violence. So another one, man, Uncle Charity, said, What? He must stay home and wife must go to work. I, I, I should also do that. Kevin, a young man, gets the, you are not married, you don't know anything. And Roberto, you remember that discussion we had in Guyana when the magistrate said to me, Mr. Kisun, if you're not married, how do you know about these things? So on. And then we had a DPP who was pregnant at the time, stand up and say, but she married, and she knew that the Mr. So that, was, so that is the cultural context that Guyana presents. So what I want to talk about is who are the, the men that we're talking about, um, the partnership, what is this partnership, what has been happening in Guyana and the future. We know him, he would never do such a thing, is the response that some women members of the Guyana Teachers Union gave last week to a charge that has been laid against the president of the Guyana Teachers Union that he had raped a 15 year old girl. Right? And the woman stood up publicly and said that we know him, he would never do such a thing. So who are these men? They're young, men, men young, old, they feel young, some of them. They're educated, they're not so educated, they are aware and they're not so aware. And the ones that terrify me are the ones who are educated and not aware. So when we have the ones who are the rotary and the you know the men with ties, sorry Commissioner. Um, <laughs> you know, when they pronounce on matters of masculinity and manhood and beating women, um, that's, I get scared. Some of them are straight, some are gay, some, and all have something to prove in their sexuality. Uh, whether it's gay men who have to prove that they have to make a child to show that they're not gay, or, or some gay men having to marry to show that they're not gay, straight men who have to constantly prove um, that they are in control of women's sexuality. They're Hindu, Muslim, Christian, Baha'i, Rastafarian, and convenient because scripture is invoked in our region in, in interesting ways. And we talk about the homosexuality. You know, you know, everybody can come to church and talk about that. We talk about gender. It's interesting how faith is done. Um, I and in Guyana, we have PPP, PNC, meaning across the spectrum, the political spectrum. Those are two old political parties. I am fed up with the young people who are nowhere there. So they're not going to listen to any of the political leaders. They're poor, they're rich, they're hustling, and they get across the economic spectrum. Some are respectable and some are not so respectable. And 
And I have to put there where it's gone in all of this, because in the discussion today, I think we forget, I don't know, I find that there's a gap here. Our region is very much influenced by faith-based people. And I put T.D. Jakes and Miles Monroe, and y'all know who these are, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So T.D. Jakes, um, his DVD is being sold with pornography. You know that the DVD in Ghana, we have the DVD selling. We don't have intellectual property restrictions in Ghana. So we have DVDs and movies. So the T.D. Jakes DVDs are selling with the, and it's interesting because some of us who, you know, we have to listen to the ideology that, it's refreshing ideology. And it's as if we understand our president met with Mr. Miles Monroe, who's trying to figure out if these are men to bring down to Guyana, for the government to pay to come to Guyana to talk to men about manhood and masculinity. So I ask, where is God in all of this? Because I think uh, there's some need, obviously, for a lot of men, for some spirituality. And I think you, and Donald will probably talk a lot more about that. So what's this partnership? What does McMahon do think? I mean, he's <laughs> right? And when you read, you know, when you read in the scripture reports, you know, she was killed by the man, not the man killed her. Right? Mm -hmm. She was killed. And there's a whole history about her and nothing about him. I, mean, I remember one time writing a letter in the newspaper that, so, hey, you know, I heard, I had to hear all her and his family history and everything. No Chris Brown. At the same time, again, we have to go through this lady who died. Every single thing about her and her friends and nothing about her partner. Mm -hmm. What about his mother and his father and his this and who out and that and So that is interesting. Um, so that, that comes up there. Do we have this consensus on common concept? Your partnerships are supposed to be based on some common ground. And the men that we're dealing with, because in the engagement with men, it's a, we have to understand that men and boys are and have been hurt by women. Well, it's a mother's tearing tear, but you know damn good like your father and so on, right? So we got these complex relationships with this because woman is, you know, mother, sister, grandmother, girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, sweet woman, all the rest of it. And then men and boys are also victims of violence. I want to say to Robert on behalf of men, that the criminals are violent against men. Not only for, you know, it's, it's also very violent for men and boys. And a man is more likely to be killed by another man. I mean, you know, men are, are die more in violence than, and are hurt more. Perhaps, you know, the way we think about violence, we have to remember that. I asked this, does this a victim perpetrator discourse here? And this is after me doing all this work where people are saying that all of a sudden you're hearing that when you start to try to talk about who in a particular context about gender, I ask this question, is there a guilty gender? Are you bringing men on board because men are guilty of this violence? When we have this thing about ending violence against women and girls, it's, what, it's ending men's violence against women and girls. And what does that say for all of these men? You, you understand what is happening? So men as the perpetrator, women as the victim, is that this score isn't going to be helpful. And if all our dialoguing and partnerships that we know in the world where we're trying to be peace and equity, that didn't help. In Ghana, we have the ethnic issue. We always have this question, is there a guilty race? Is there black and Indian? Right? So we have this, you know, what, the, what, what, what are we going to do with this? Right? And then who are men partnering with? Who is this woman? Who are these women? Are there women who are, as we talked about earlier, who in their personal lives use power in their own ways? Right? Are there women who they are they, I mean, this thing about fear, Mr. Weiss, that's a very interesting. We are afraid. A lot of men are afraid. What does this mean? Because a part, you see, there's this feeling that you have to give up some power. And a lot of us in the Caribbean, we don't understand. Whether it's parents and children, we don't understand that sharing power doesn't mean giving up. Right? So we have to look at that a little bit differently. So what's been happening with protecting our women's folk? And interestingly enough, this is the kind of language that the men who are working with women, well-meaning, but this thing about our women folk, which, um, and I, you know, some of you know, um, said, you know, nothing that irritates her more than hearing about our women folk. But again, it's this kind of chapter, you know, how do we keep the cows well, you know? <laughs> we don't want to damage the, you know, the animals and so forth, you know, we need them, right? They have to look after us. And, uh, so, <laughs> So there is language, but, but, but it's there, so that's what I did. Men against violence against women, I tried with that uh, when I first met Donald, and 
um, that didn't work out well in Ghana because men were dealing with all sorts of violence. And you couldn't just deal with men against violence against women. And that's just the experience I personally had um, in Ghana. When in my, I started out being the lone male volunteer with Health and Shelter, which had a lot of men, uh, which had a lot of women, all, all, all the others are women. But right now we have men on board as volunteers and staff, and our lead public education staff are men. So it's interesting how, and it is accepted and normal that men will be out there talking about domestic violence. So it's, you know, the public domain and so on. So that, that has been a shift in, in what we've seen. We had a group called Men of Purpose led by um, Mr. Frederick Cox. Some of you know him and he passed away this year. And he has been, he has tried in his own work to, to keep this going and, and two men's fellowship within his church. This year, something called the Men, I'm sorry, that's a, a spelling mistake. The Men Empowerment Network, M-E-N, was launched. That network is led by a pastor who is a member of parliament and an advisor to the president, a member of parliament of the ruling political party. And in our strange country, that brings in its own um, connotation. Because there's suspicions that he's responding to funding opportunities, <laughs> and etc. And that men as partners is now sexy. It wasn't sexy in 1995, but the fact that UNIFEM and UNFP and so on are asking these things. Um, so, so, but they had an anger, there's an approach about anger management and so. And again, with the goal to dealing with violence and violence against women, but some of the philosophical approaches are a little problematic. But that, but that, you know, they're there. They had a big forum last week, Friday. It's from, from consists of a lot of pastors who have been trying to do community work, who have acknowledged that the church has failed the congregation in not dealing with. Um, domestic violence, and they're mostly the evangelical, new, new uh, evangelical Pentecostal traditions. So, very um, large network and very resourced because um, also the president um, that comes out of there. And then, I am, um, I manage a project from the African Health Insurance we call the Picnic Project, which is really a project about child protection, and my life has moved into this direction. And, um, it's in a community called Sophia, which was a squatting area around Georgetown. Sophia is a very big area. And one of the byproducts of this um, project has been the men's forum. And it's interesting called men's forum because it's a forum for men and boys. Mm -hmm. And in the discussion, we said, right, we don't have any project money for you to buy snacks or anything, so please don't start. You have to bring your own snacks. And the idea is that the guys meet old and young. And they are interacting and being very honest. It's facilitated by a fantastic man called Colin Marx, who ensures that the discussion is open and honest. And it's about boys talking about their fathers are no good. And other man saying, I think I need to meet your father. And it was wonderful to hear that because I don't think older men have listened to young. We don't do that. Eh? Because older men expect that they to talk to young. So that interaction within that community has been fantastic, and it's, as I said, it's something that is organic, and we hope that it will thrive, and that's something that can continue in different ways. So this thing can done, which is another thing about dealing with violence. Um, you know, the suspicions. The allegations of abuse by, <coughs> uh, uh, again, uh, one more Caribbean Prime Minister, um, who was very closely affiliated with the political leader in Guyana, and it shocked a lot of people. And, that's, that's the, and the response of the country and this political party was also shocking. So there was a, is that those in Congress? I think y'all know who the Prime Minister is. <laughs> then in Guyana, the allegations of high tech domestic violence by our former First Lady. It was formal because we went subsequently to discover that the President and Baron never leave. So if any man going out there is going on, if any man going out there is going they did a religious ceremony, but then it all emerged, it all evolved, it was an ugly, very ugly scenario, and I stopped, at one point we had to stop talking, because of what do you do when the president is accused of this and there is no space for discussion, even though the first lady herself said she just wanted certain things. Because straight away, but then you have a man who's going to die, you're going to hear, we're going to do it. 
that was a lesson in history, if I get cuts for it, but that, that, that's not it, right? So there's this perception that we let the big men get away with it, and the only target is the, the poor and the dispossessed yeah. men who get catch, yeah. right? And Commissioner, you probably know what I'm talking about, yeah, right? Yeah. And then what we can do about the poverty, racial inequality, unemployment, health, lack of education, the violence, the West Indies cricket team, and all those things. <laughs>
You got a digital ad in Ireland, I'm sure. Yeah, we're up in Latin America, don't have none. I don't think digital girls exist anywhere else. Right? Carrot, carrot as well. Carrot, and to McCall, one of the sponsors of some of the most awful, um, some of the most awful things, which, you know, this is where all of this comes. I saw the minibus, and it's drink a carrot, drink a carrot, da 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 da, you know, so. <laughs> Right? You know, the CD that, I mean, and, and, and the minibus is a good thing to travel on in here, because we still allow to have that, uh, to have music, you know, those, to those small. But that's what you hear. Right? I'm trying to engage Carib and Anthony McCall and those companies is just to ask, you know, what we're going on. And Carib also sponsors sports. I don't know if you all have a concern in the region, but who is sponsoring sports? And the sports are targeted at young men, right? And what does it bring, right, to young girls and you know, so right? And I put wrong here at the bottom, because I'm a passionate anti-alcohol advocate. I had to be, because you can't be doing domestic violence work in Ghana, and women telling you that when the husband drink, they're beating them up. I can't pretend that I'm a moderate drinker. <laughs> we don't have that. I don't know how many, I mean, we might have that, but moderate drinking on the sugar, it's still, you know. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's not true. I mean, we know, we know, and, and moderate drinking the glass, so wine and so on. It's not nice to be the glass, but what we're dealing with is awful. And rum and alcohol in our region, our region is touted, it's prioritizing it, you see it. And I guess again, as an Indian person from Guyana, where I know that it affects the India, I think the chemistry of Indian people is probably different from other groups, I don't know. Because one or two drinks will turn normally sensible men into very violent men. And, and in the discussions about domestic violence, um, whatever language we use, it's interesting how women will say. Because you learn that there's no correlation between alcohol and violence. That's right. right? That's what we learned from now. Yeah. Right? When I started doing domestic violence and the lectures, I said there's no correlation. But you going out and the people telling you. <laughs> if any drunk, you just behave like that. Yeah. What he's telling you, oh God, how you didn't weekend anyway. You know? <laughs> in Liberty Avenue, we hear the guy, he's getting off the path to weekend. Look at him, he's a drunk and yeah. Right? So, so it's what, what is our reality? And we are promoting liquor as a Caribbean thing. Right? So this is trying to do that. And the liquor companies want to score. Right? So what's going on with that? Alright, so to close off now, um, I put that there is not so just the Ghanaians more men like you. That just came in the email this day when I'm doing the This is in response to something that's going on in Ghana with one of my colleague commissioners on the Rights and Child Commission who allegedly was trying to have a conversation with a 15-year-old boy to have sex. So that has had its own sense. But I put here the idea, and I don't know if those of you are familiar with the Tesco Diwali, which comes just after Norad, which is a nine-night, um, it's a festival, the Hindu religion honors the feminine, and the creative power Shakti is the, it, it, it's feminine. And you would think that any religion that honors the feminine the God is different from the wife. Right? <laughs> the God is just different from the wife. But this is on Facebook from a young man who I never expected it from. This is what he had for his message from Noah Rand, where he says, he and, and those of you who are familiar with Facebook will know what the messages are, he extends Noah Rand greeting star. This sacred period is dedicated to that supreme being in the feminine form. I pray that my Guyanese brothers recognize the value of women in our lives and stop the abuse and murder.
with color. So I just wanted to brush it because I'm reading in between reading and share that with you. Go.